Grand Admiral was one of the highest military ranks an individual could achieve in the Galactic Empire. Today we're covering every Imperial Grand Admiral that ever held the position in both Star Wars canon and Legends. There were 12 total Grand Admirals allowed to hold the rank at any given time. In canon, we only currently know of three. Of course, we have to start with the most famous of them all. Grand Admiral Thrawn was originally from the Chiss Ascendancy, an area of space located within the unknown regions of the galaxy. There he served as a senior captain and witnessed a growing threat in a rival faction called the Grisk. His investigation into their attacks led to a chance encounter with Anakin Skywalker during the Clone Wars. Chiss leadership refused to fully recognize the danger the Grisk presented, so Thrawn took it upon himself to make an alliance with the growing Galactic Empire. He used his experiences with Anakin Skywalker to gain an audience with Emperor Palpatine, who admitted him to the Imperial Navy. Thrawn's tactical brilliance helped him achieve the rank of Grand Admiral in only 12 years. He was tasked with destroying a rebel cell located in the Lothal Sector, but the group included two Jedi. One of them, Ezra Bridger, was able to summon several space whales to Lothal during Thrawn's siege, and the creatures took them both to the planet Peridia in a completely different galaxy. There they were stranded for 10 years until rescue arrived in the form of the Night Sister Morgan Elsbeth. Thanks to a massive hyperspace ring she constructed, Thrawn was able to return to his own galaxy to lead what was left of the Galactic Empire five years after the Emperor's death. Grand Admiral Ray Sloan was from Ganthel, located in the Galactic Core. It was a planet plagued by gangs and criminals until the Galactic Empire drove them out. Sloan was inspired to join the Imperial Navy to help bring order to the galaxy. By the age of 30, she was the captain of the Star Destroyer Ultimatum in the Gore system, where she encountered the Jedi in hiding Kanan Jarrus. For the next seven years, she continued the hunt for the Jedi, and her ambition led to her promotion to Vice Admiral. Despite never capturing Kanan, she maintained her rank, and eight years later at the Battle of Endor, she served as an admiral on board the Star Destroyer Vigilance. After the deaths of the Emperor, Darth Vader, and Admiral Piet, Rey Sloan found herself as the highest ranking officer in the battle, and she ordered a retreat. She was soon promoted to the rank of Grand Admiral and leader of the Imperial Navy, but she found a rival in the form of Gallius Rax, who led the Empire from the shadows. He orchestrated the Battle of Jakku, hoping to bring about the destruction of both New Republic and Imperial forces to fulfill Emperor Palpatine's last orders. But Sloan was able to stop Rax and headed into the unknown regions to rebuild what she saw as a more pure version of the Empire. Her fate has yet to be revealed, but she seemed to have been instrumental in the creation of the First Order. Grand Admiral Balani Savit was from a prominent Coruscant family. Similar to Grand Admiral Thrawn, he had a love for the arts and was a noted musical composer himself during the time of the Republic. After the Clone Wars, he joined the Imperial Navy and eventually rose to the rank of Grand Admiral, commanding the Third Fleet. Like Thrawn and General Cassio Tag, Savit opposed the construction of the Death Star, believing it to be a waste of time and resources. He refused to publicly voice his opinions for fear of political consequences, and instead worked with pirates in his sector to steal supplies meant for the superweapon. One year before the Death Star's completion, the supply issues were irritating enough that Grand Moff Tarkin requested Grand Admiral Thrawn's help resolving the matter. Within a week, the Chiss discovered Savit's role in the piracy, and he was arrested. His story is told in the book Thrawn Treason by Timothy Zahn. Since Savit was removed from the rank of Grand Admiral, Thrawn was exiled on Peridia, and Sloan didn't receive the rank until after the Battle of Endor, it's possible there are still 12 canon Grand Admirals to learn about. But for now, we'll ease into the Grand Admirals of Star Wars Legends by covering a character that might eventually hold the rank in canon. He at least exists in canon. Grand Admiral Gilad Pelion served in the Republic and Imperial navies for a combined total of 70 years. During the Clone Wars, he was the captain of an assault ship, and when the Republic transitioned into the Empire, he continued his service on board the Star Destroyer Chimera. In Legends, it was Pelion who issued the retreat order at the Battle of Endor instead of Rey Sloan. When Grand Admiral Thrawn returned to the Empire, he selected the Chimera as his flagship and took Pelion as his protege. He remained completely loyal to the Grand Admiral until Thrawn's death at the Battle of Bilbringi, where Pelion was once again forced to issue a retreat. Still, he remained with the failing Imperial Remnant, serving alongside Warlord Teradoc and Admiral Dalla, but each new leader fell to the New Republic. The Council of Moffs eventually named him Admiral Pelion, which gave him enough power to force the Remnant into a peace treaty with their enemies 15 years after the Battle of Endor. When the Yuuzhan Vong attacked the galaxy, he leveraged his position in the Imperial Remnant fleet to join the Galactic Alliance alongside the New Republic to defeat the invaders. During that conflict, he was promoted to the rank of Grand Admiral. Demetrius Zarin was one of the very first Grand Admirals promoted to the rank two years before the Battle of Yavin. He led the Empire's research and development team for Starfighter technology. 
In that role, he helped create the TIE Advanced and the TIE Defender, a starfighter credited to Grand Admiral Thrawn in canon stories. Despite his status within the Empire, Zarin sought more power and attempted to overthrow the Emperor himself. He allied himself with Arden Lin, one of Palpatine's Force-sensitive agents, to successfully capture the Emperor over Coruscant, but the coup was stopped by Darth Vader and then Vice Admiral Thrawn. He fled the Chiss and his forces all the way into the Unknown Regions, where his ship malfunctioned and exploded. Thrawn was promoted to the rank of Grand Admiral as Zarin's replacement. Marty O'Batch was a rival to Grand Admiral Demetrius Zarin. They were both involved in weapons development, and Batch was specifically tasked by the Empire to research cloaking devices. His work led to an entire Super Star Destroyer and research facility that had cloaking technology, and he was the designer of the TIE Phantom, a starfighter that could become invisible. The Rebel Alliance learned of the project and successfully destroyed the entire production line along with the Super Star Destroyer and production facility. Having failed his Emperor, Batch fled to the Outer Rim where his crew eventually mutinied and killed him shortly after the Battle of Endor. Niall Declan was a member of the Republic Navy during the Clone Wars and continued his service after the rise of the Galactic Empire. His unnatural talent as a TIE pilot revealed his sensitivity to the Force, and he was allowed to study the nature of the Dark Side. When his training was complete, Palpatine promoted him to the rank of Grand Admiral. He was stationed on Naboo for a time after the Battle of Yavin, but was summoned to the second Death Star along with several other Grand Admirals for the Battle of Endor. Declan was on board the superweapon when it was destroyed. Donetta Pitta was a near-human serving in the Imperial Navy. Despite his ancestry, he was highly xenophobic. Emperor Palpatine selected him as one of the Twelve Grand Admirals and sent him to oversee the Empire's expansion into the Outer Rim. After the Battle of Endor, Pitta carved out a territory for himself in the Corellian Sector, but another Grand Admiral, Joseph Grunger, fought and killed his former peer during his own campaign to take control of Coruscant. Grunger was known within the Navy as a respected strategist. He held the rank of Grand Admiral for six years until the destruction of the second Death Star. When he learned of the Emperor's death, he immediately took control of the ships in his sector to become one of the first Imperial Warlords. Within a year, he was in command of a sizable fleet that included over 30 Star Destroyers and one Super Star Destroyer called Aggressor. He headed for Coruscant, conquering systems as he traveled until he met resistance from Grand Admiral Pitta near Corellia. The Warlord's forces were nearly wiped out by a weapon called a Torpedo Sphere. In desperation, Joseph Grunger rammed his Super Star Destroyer into Pitta's ship, killing them both. Grand Admiral Milton Tackle was well known in the Galactic Empire as being a man with many vices, but his love of spice actually proved to be an asset, providing him with some limited telepathic abilities. This gave him a strategic edge and a reputation within the Empire as a gifted tactician, earning him a promotion to Grand Admiral. He was one of several Grand Admirals present on the Death Star at the Battle of Endor, where he was once again under the influence of spice. His telepathy warned him of the coming Imperial defeat, and so he fled the station as well as the Endor system. Tackle allied himself with Trioculus, the supposed heir to Palpatine, and they worked to defeat Grand Admiral Joseph Grunger's growing influence as a warlord. But Tackle questioned one too many of his new leader's orders, resulting in his execution. Afshin Makati's promotion to the rank of Grand Admiral was a surprise to many. He did not have any notable victories to speak of, and his career was relatively mediocre. During a mission alongside a secret dark side sect of the Empire, he created a rival in the form of Supreme Prophet Kadan, who wounded the Grand Admiral with Force Lightning for insubordination. Makati was on board the second Death Star with many other Grand Admirals during the Battle of Endor, but he escaped its destruction and fled back to Coruscant. An imposter of Kadan's attempted to take control of the Empire after Palpatine's death and Makati hunted him down. He believed he had killed his true rival until his own death shortly after. The details surrounding his death are currently unknown. Pakati Sin grew up deeply religious on the planet Terrace. When the Empire outlawed his religion, he turned his spirituality to Imperial doctrine, and his loyalty eventually earned him a promotion to Grand Admiral. After the Emperor's death, Sin remained loyal to orders coming from Imperial leadership on Coruscant, one of which was the creation of the Church of the Dark Side, which Pakati enthusiastically joined. He relocated to Kashyyyk and the base of a Dark Side prophetess who became Sin's spiritual advisor. There he was met in battle by New Republic Admiral Akbar. Pakati threw him himself into the battle with righteous fury and was handily defeated by his opponent. Grand Admiral Oswald Teshik was given command of the Imperial Center Oversector, which included Coruscant and several other important core worlds. He was one of Palpatine's most trusted leaders and was given the Super Star Destroyer Whelm as his flagship. After failing an important mission for the Emperor, he was sent into a hopeless assault against an overwhelming enemy in the Hapes Consortium. Teshik survived against all odds, but required cybernetic parts to be installed on three-quarters of his body. 
He was later present at the Battle of Endor and refused to retreat along with the rest of the fleet after the Death Star's destruction. After four more hours of fighting, his ship was disabled and the Grand Admiral was captured. He was subsequently put on trial for war crimes, convicted, and sentenced to death by the New Republic. Rufon Tegelinus was a well-known member of the Imperial Elite. His reputation easily earned him a promotion to the rank of Grand Admiral. He was skilled in political maneuvering and used his position to create multiple alliances to help further his career and influence. His efforts were not in vain and earned himself a dual rank of both Grand Admiral and Grand Moff, governing the Imperial Center Oversector at the heart of the galaxy. When the Empire fell into chaos after the Battle of Endor, Tegelinus was invited to become a member of the Central Committee of Grand Moffs, but Rufon felt he should lead the group and refused simple admission to the committee. In exchange, the other Grand Moffs murdered him. Grand Admiral Ishan Ilraz made a name for himself during the Clone Wars as a young spokesman for the Commission for the Protection of the Republic. Their loyalty was to Chancellor Palpatine first and foremost, and Ilraz happily retained his position as it shifted into the Galactic Empire. After 17 years of service, he was promoted to the rank of Grand Admiral despite having no military experience. His appointment was heavily criticized, although never directly to Palpatine, and Ilraz was allowed to keep his rank. For six years, his career was full of massacres and atrocities meant to gain him more favor in the Emperor's eyes. After Palpatine's death, Ishin became unstable, knowing that without his Emperor's support, his days in power were also numbered. He flew his Star Destroyer into a Nova, which killed him and his entire crew, ending his life in one final massacre. Octavian Grant grew up as a member of nobility, where he developed contempt for any life form he considered to be beneath him. He served in the defense fleet of his sector and later in the Republic Navy during the Clone Wars. He continued his career in the Galactic Empire and proved himself to be a tactician worthy of the rank of Grand Admiral, but Grant grew to resent his fellow Grand Admirals and even Palpatine himself, believing his nobility to be of a higher pedigree. His contempt did not go unnoticed, and after the loss of the second Death Star, the other Grand Admirals and Imperial Warlords seemed to agree to eliminate Octavian. For two years, he evaded capture and death, outliving his peers. He then turned to the New Republic and defected, offering up Imperial secrets in exchange for political immunity. The former Grand Admiral even fought against the resurrected clone of Palpatine eight years after his defection. Now we've covered all the Grand Admirals, but just for fun, let's run through Thrawn's legend story as well. Grand Admiral Thrawn was originally from the Chiss Ascendancy in the Unknown Regions. As part of the Chiss Expansionary Defense Force, he protected his people against all threats like the extragalactic Yuuzhan Vong warriors. His ruthless methods led to his exile, where he was eventually discovered by the Galactic Empire. He was admitted into the Imperial Navy, and his tactical skills saw him quickly climb the ranks to become a Grand Admiral. The promotion of an alien to the prestigious rank was taken poorly by the other Grand Admirals, and so Thrawn was exiled once again. But this time it was sanctioned by Palpatine, who wanted the Chiss to tame the Unknown Regions and eliminate threats to the Empire. There, he secretly established the Empire of the Hand, a network of strongholds that could protect the galaxy from the Yuuzhan Vong. Thrawn was absent from Imperial space when Palpatine was killed during the Battle of Endor. Five years later, he returned and successfully reunited the Imperial Remnant in a campaign against the New Republic. His leadership saw many victories, but Thrawn was ultimately betrayed and killed by his bodyguard during a decisive battle. And those are all the Grand Admirals of the Galactic Empire, both in canon and in Star Wars Legends. There are almost certainly more that will be revealed in canon, so I might be updating this video in the future. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on our socials, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.